Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, today we will be talking about Packet Plus Testing Farm and Fedora, how we are still happily uh, testing upstream projects. So as for the testing farm, we have uh, Jan Havlin as a representative, and for Packet, uh, Frantisek Lachman and me. Uh, so what we will be talking about today is firstly uh, giving some introduction to Packet and testing farm, uh, then a little bit uh, on how to onboard to using Packet and testing farm. Uh, then we will talk about the upstream use cases and we will also include the news. And of course we will be talking about present and future, so what's next? Uh, let's start, start uh, with a little bit of introduction to Packet. So Packet has uh, two main purposes. It is a service that validates upstream changes downstream uh, and you can use it on GitHub or GitLab. And uh, in here you can consider RPM builds, testing and newly also static application security testing. Uh, and then uh, we can also bring the upstream releases to downstream, uh, currently Fedora and also newly CentOS stream. So here you can see some logos for both of the use cases. So for upstream CI, we work on GitHub and GitLab and we are using uh, Fedora Copper for the RPM builds, testing farm of course for the test, and then for example Koji for the uh, Koji scratch builds upstream. And for the downstream automation, uh, we have again uh, taking sources from upstream that can be GitHub or GitLab and using uh, Peggy or Disgit, Koji uh, and Bodhi and so on. And so you may ask uh, who uses Packet? Uh, Packet has quite a stable user base right now uh, and a lot of people use it mostly on uh, GitHub. Uh, and also a few users on GitLab. So you can see, for example, Podman, Systemd, Cockpit, and much more. You can guess the logos. And if you are curious about some numbers, so here we have some absolute numbers uh, for each of the functionalities. So for example, the copper builds, uh, for the tests, for the releasing. Uh, and also for each you can see the active projects that use these functionalities. And as you can see, we also have uh, quite some badges, a uh, lot more of them, but you can check that yourself. And now uh, Honzo, uh, you will talk about the testing farm. Uh, so testing farm is an open source testing system as a service. One of its main goal is to unify testing experience across various distributions such as RHEL, Fedora, Central Stream, but we are planning even more in the future. Uh, it's a flavor of software as a service. It focuses on executing automated tests against virtual machines, bare metal machines, and containers. Testing Farm works in a way that user provides a description of testing environment and also tests defined uh, using TNT metadata format and testing farm does the heavy lifting such as provisioning uh, machine, executing the test and then it provides the results. Uh, testing farm is exposing a single public HTTP API endpoint which is used for integrating with other services. So you can think of testing farm as a backend of other CI systems. Um, this year we have reached 1.2 million test requests per year. Uh, this is the projected amount of requests per year. Um, as I mentioned, testing farm has a single public API, but under the hood there are two deployments. Uh, we call them wrenches because this is a testing farm. Uh, one of them is in public and the other one is in Red Hat in internal network. It's used for rel testing mostly. So uh, once you submit a request to the API, it then gets routed to one of the to one of the ranches based on the API token. And in those ranches, there is a, a machine provisioning in one of the infrastructure that's av available there. As you can see, we support many types of infrastructures, but uh, I'm gonna speak only about public range where only this part is 
relevant. So in public, you can use containers for AWS machines. Um, containers are the simplest, cheapest, fastest way to spin up a testing machine. I think around a third of the workload is done there. But, and it is used when you don't care about the testing environment, you don't specify a testing environment, then it's executed inside a container. Or you can ask for an AWS machine. Uh, they are available for free because they are sponsored by Amazon, so thanks Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there you can select uh, from x86-64 or Arch-64 architectures, and you can also pick uh, virtual machines or newly, uh, newly added bare metal machines. And also, what's new, you can select uh, machines with dedicated GPUs. There is a link to documentation about how to request for specific hardware requirements. Uh, this shows the largest users of testing farm. As you can see, the vast majority is uh, triggered from Fedora CI or Packet. There's also Auto SD, which is uh, testing of automotive uh, distro based on CentOS and also Zoo. This one of the largest ones. So uh, Fedora CI is the largest user which triggers testing farm jobs. You can easily onboard testing farm in Fedora CI if you create a TMT plan in this git. There's a link to how to do it in documentation. Uh, around 1,000 Fedora components onboarded to testing farm in Fedora CI. And uh, testing farm jobs are triggered on two levels in Fedora CI. The first one is on this git pull request. When a, dis uh, when a pull request is created, it builds a scratch build, and this scratch build is then sent over to testing farm where the uh, TMT plans are executed. Or the second use case is, on, uh, is when body updates are created, it triggers automated tests, and those tests are used as gating for the body updates. Okay, so we already touched the onboarding topic a little bit, so let's have a, a little bit closer look into that. Uh, so firstly, onboarding to Packet itself. Uh, the onboarding is quite simple. There are basically three steps. Uh, and the first is to enable the interaction with the application either on GitHub or GitLab. Uh, so in GitHub, you just install an application and in uh, GitLab, uh, you just need to set up the webhooks, but it's also quite straightforward. Uh, then the second step is uh, on GitHub, it is automated. Uh, it is just to verify your Fedora account uh, and to link it like with your GitHub account. And on GitLab, we did do this uh, manually. And then uh, the most important step is to create a configuration. So what you actually want Packet to do for you. And in context of this presentation, that would be probably uh, the tests and maybe the build uh, for that as well. Uh, but we will get into the more details in, in, in a while. Franza will describe all of that to you. Yes, um, testing farm is open to all Fedora contributors. Um, you have two options to choose from if you, when you want to onboard. Either you can onboard a service that triggers testing farm in the in its back backend, such as Packet or Fedora CI, or you can onboard to Testing Farm API directly. And there is a, a new feature that now you can sign in with Fedora SSO, single sign-on, at uh, testing-farm.io. And uh, if, you are, if your Fedora account is a member of Fedora contributor group, we wanted to limit it to trustworthy people, not just anyone with Fedora account. Uh, then you can self-manage your tokens. You can create or delete whatever, you, whatever you want with your tokens, and then you can submit submit requests to testing farm direct, directly via the API. Uh, if you are not a part of Fedora contributor group, you can still contact us. There is onboarding documentation, and we can sort it out for you individually. Um, yeah, uh, when you have your API token, you can use our CLI tool to submit requests, or you can use any other uh, type of integrations. Like there is GitHub Actions available. 
if you wish. Yeah, uh, one more feature that's brand new and I'm gonna promote it is testing camera reservation. So when you have a token, you can uh, provision and reserve a machine for uh, some time in testing farm and you can use it for experimenting like you can do whatever you want with it. There's, you have root access, so you can use it, for example, to develop uh, your TMT tests and execute those tests against this reserved machine. Uh, you need the latest CLI version for, for it to work, and there are two commands as an example how to reserve a machine. The first one will reserve a virtual machine with Fedora Rawhide image, and the second one will reserve a bare metal machine with AWS. I'll try to go through a few of uh, so-called upstream use cases so we can maybe like try to uh, think about what can be done with Beckit and testing farm together rather than going like through the documentation and trying to provide like all the features uh, we'll try to like show it in, on real uh, real projects how they use uh, Beckit and testing farm so you can maybe copy paste their uh, use case or get inspired. Uh, so let's start with the really basic one. Uh, this is the setup for the uh, most RPM-based pro products, projects. Uh, so there is a copper build defined. So we are building uh, on pull requests and we are uh, building for Fedora latest stable one and Fedora Rawhide. So we have a couple of aliases so you don't need to like tweak the, uh, and update the configuration every, uh, every half of a year. And also we are defining tests for a similar uh, truth set and also for the pull request. So what will happen is basically what was defined on the configuration. So uh, for pull requests, when there is a new commit or pull request opened, we are building in Copper. Uh, and then when there is a successful build, we are uh, triggering a test uh, in testing farm and you, what you will get is a, a VM with the RPM from the copper install there, and on that environment, uh, the tests are run. Uh, if you don't have uh, a test setup, uh, the installability check will be run for you, so you can start also with that simple check. Uh, if you do have a test setup, uh, we are uh, using TMT, so if you have a TMT setup on the, in the repository, it will be automatically handled to the testing farm without uh, any tweaking in the configuration file. Uh, so uh, there might be uh, situations where you don't want to have tests and uh, the project in one repository, similar as the DNF5 project, so you can specify a different FMF uh, uh, setup and maybe also refs or some other plans from a different repository. Uh, for example, you can use like the CentOS uh, compost tests when in your upstream project or something like that. You can do various magic around, uh, around this. Uh, if you don't need or don't want to build, uh, so you can use just the testing farm, so you can just run the test in this environment. No will build will happen, no artifacts will be installed and you can uh, just run the tests as the key line project. Uh, you can also uh, run uh, tests on the test definition repository, for example. Uh, there might be a situation where we want to have like couple of tests with different setup, similar as the Divisium projects that have like a various backends, so they need to uh, like try to run the test on various, uh, various database setup. So they have just two jobs with different environment. This is easily possible. Uh, also, an interesting use case, uh, mainly developed or uh, set up by Martin Pitt from the Cockpit project. Uh, they try to set up uh, so-called cross-project testing. So the uh, their test cases are introduced into their dependencies, uh, for example, Portman and others. Uh, and uh, and with this setup, they, they can uh, like realize early when things get broken, when code gets broken. Uh, and 
when this happens, if you want to introduce your test cases into a different project, it might be increase uh, clear the communication. So there is a way how to uh, how to provide some messaging uh, if things go bad. Uh, and th there are also this, uh, options to like trigger trigger tests somehow manually, so you don't need to like waste the resources. We have like a couple of uh, test setups, so you can trigger the uh, test cases based on labels, so you can label your, your jobs. And also you can have a default set of labels, so you don't need to write it all the way every time. Uh, yeah, it's not bother. Uh, and speaking of labels, there are also other labels and disforge labels, so you can also specify uh, some rules when this needs to be present or absent, so you can build around this label workflow also. And the very new stuff uh, is that Pekit currently, this is not related to the testing farm, but about uh, open scan hub. So you can newly run uh, static analysis on top of your builds. And this is done automatically. Uh, the only thing you need to do is to define a copper build job for your uh, main branch or branch that you are merging pull requests in. And the, the reason is that we want for static analysis to have just the differential scan. So you don't need to tackle with all the uh, issues that your project might have, but you can just check those that are introduced in your pull request. So yeah, if you do this simple setup, you have static analysis just now. Uh, there is a blog post about it, so you can take a look. Uh, also, you can treat the VM images that are used, so you can use your just need once. So, and the future. Uh, one of the features that we are planning in, in testing farm is uh, in a repository configuration where we will allow uh, storing ad additional properties in, in your GitLab, GitHub or any Git repo. And uh, those properties will be parsed by the test request for example, to modify the testing environment and so on. But this is important because this will allow storing secrets that will be uh, that will be encrypted and only testing farm will be able to decrypt them. And this is important because currently there is no way on how to pass secrets to testing farm through packet, for example. So this feature will allow passing secrets to testing farm for other CI systems. Uh, another feature that's almost done, but not, not fully, is multi-host testing. Uh, this will allow testing scenarios, uh, like a client server type of scenarios, where in one test you will have uh, multiple machines that will like, communicate with each other and so on. Uh, this is already available in PMT, so you can try it out locally, but it doesn't work yet in testing farm production fully. Yeah, you define those those uh, hosts in your PMT plan. Yeah, and just shortly, uh, the next steps for Packet. So as Hansa mentioned, mentioned once Testing Farm will have the support for the secrets, uh, we will do the integration with that. Uh, then uh, we have seen the Open Scan Hub integration. So that was mostly a prototype. Uh, currently, there is a discussion open on GitHub, so we will be happy for any feedback, and based on that, we will definitely improve on that front as well. Uh, then, uh, Packet also focuses on the release thinking. For that, we had a talk earlier today. Uh, if you are interested, you can check that out, and uh, we definitely have plans for a lot of improvements there. And uh, yeah, there is also a proof of concept for Packet as a disk CI. So, so there have been some discussions uh, regarding deprecating the Federal CI. And since uh, Packet might be an option and has the technical uh, background for that, uh, we definitely would like to research uh, this as well. So that was it. Uh, and uh, here you can see links to the documentation, uh, to our communication channels, uh, and yeah, feel free to reach out either here or uh, on any of these channels. Yes, there are stickers in the lobby. <laughs> Thank you. Oops, before I
questions? So you kind of glossed over the custom VMs, and I was wondering about, can you say more about the use of custom VMs? Yeah, uh, I think there is some like manual or, or tweaking needed to get, get it to testing farm, like to properly manipulate that. So not, s uh, should I repeat that or? Okay, so the question was if we can maybe provide more information about using custom VMs, and currently maybe uh, Honza will correct me. It's there are some manual steps on the way, uh, but we have also prototype of integrate integration with the image builder, uh, so we can like create a VM image build uh, for your PRs. Uh, but there are not so many users yet, so we are waiting for the use case so we can like continue on this, but otherwise we are like stopping the development on that or pausing. Uh, but the next step would be like to not only build the VM, but also put it to testing farm and then run tests on top of that. So if, if you have a like, use case for that, maybe we can get a good example. Yeah, so maybe we, we can discuss and take a take a look how, how how to do that. Yeah. Okay, so I have two questions. First, one was probably answered already, and that was uh, there was one diskit project in uh, the adopted project, and I assumed that was the proof of concept for the CI. Yeah, probably. I, I was curious as well when I was uh, doing the fresh screenshot. So yeah, probably, probably something <laughs> around that, uh, or maybe some issue on the like reporting side or something like that. Yeah, and the second one was uh, about if there is uh, if the bucket commands for the bucket bot are actually documented somewhere. Like the comment commands. Uh, the, yeah, the commands you uh, commands you can send by uh, comment in. Yeah, GitHub, GitLab. yeah, yeah. Sh should should be on the like uh, description of the test job. Let's take a look if the Wi-Fi allows. Starting and also, uh, you can also uh, use uh, artifacts from a different pull request, and then are like use you can use identifiers or labels. Uh, okay, that's nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I got clear or we we have that job. <laughs> You, you talked a little bit about the OS build uh, integration. And on the Fedora Cloud side, we use Kiwi uh, to do our, build our image builds. Um, is there any pathway there for us to, to, um, to build a... Uh, uh, we're already using uh, Fedora testing for, for the validation of those image, image uh, development, but I, I would love to know if you see another place where we can, we can integrate. Usually, if, if there is an API or some like endpoint and use case for that and enough demand, we can take a look at that. Currently, we start with the image builder, so that would be nice to like unify and don't have like a couple of ways how to do the same thing. So maybe we can see if the missing features in the image builder can't be put into that or if the PV is the way for Fedora and we should focus more on that. So. Uh, no one yet requested anything about that and everyone was like looking forward to, to the image builder and after all no, no 
much attention to that. So yeah. Uh, okay. Ah, this isn't a fix. <laughs> yeah. Let's. We'll see. <laughs> I haven't researched QV if there is a way how to, like with the image builder, the, the nice thing is that they have like easy way how to provide the RPMs uh, for the build. So from our point of view that we have like a copper build with the RPMs ready, so it's really simple to continue. So not sure if we should like how to tweak the, the like build process and introduce RPMs there. Then, then it's, it's Hi guys, yeah, interesting. Um, to what extent are you, th are you the resources you're using, the backend resources, so ample that you'd love to have um, upstream projects use this test farm as a uh, bunch of slaves for their own CI CD stuff that's not really closely bound to Fedora or anything, but just basically Fedora developers but doing a lot of upstream testing. Is this something that you have spare resources for? So the if I get it correctly, so why we are doing all of this, uh, or? Uh, not so much why, it's, uh, can, can, as in can, uh, imagine me, I'm an, an I'm upstream developer of some random package as well as a Fedora pa guy. Can, uh, with this system, are, am I being invited to use your test equipment, uh, your, your backend mm -hmm. farm and um, the grazing, whatever, uh, all the AWS resources you've access to, to fire up VMs and run my own tests for my own upstream projects on there. Is, do you have so much spare resource that that would be fine? No, like not, not infinitely, but yeah, as, as mentioned, we, uh, like partially it's, it's like uh, supported by Amazon uh, and The thing here is that uh, donated resources are not limitless, and when <laughs> yeah. I mean it, it's a I mean too much is is really like stepping outside yeah stepping deeply outside of the boundaries of of the community projects. We, for example, one of our users is SystemD and like hyperscale six. So, so there are like big projects, yeah. uh, and the, uh, yeah. So, so if it is like reasonable, so and it makes sense to run this, so so th then there is a, a reason okay. and some value on that. So, so th that's fine. And also that like big projects like Convert uh, Convertrail or like uh, Leap and these. Are trying to like tweak the tweak the test cases that not everything can needs to be run all the time, so there some optimization maybe can, can be like. I applied. think the important guideline here is that there has to be a some kind of provably tight relationship to Fedora for it to be acceptable. Like the only constraint that I've had with so all the Fedora Kiwi descriptions are actually CI'd through um, the testing farm. Every pull request gets a image builds of all the release blocking images that are already ported over. And the only problem we have is that they keep running out of disk space for the images to temporarily exist. Uh, everything else is fine, um, but you know, it, and no one's like really smacked us for doing it. It's just like they never accounted for someone to actually use it. And but just be mindful, and if they come and talk to you, then that then just be ready to adjust as they need to. Yeah, that that's maybe nice. To like. I also used to run CI infrastructure before, so <laughs> I know what kind of problems you yeah. could get. <laughs> yes, so th there is not like a strict limit and it's dependable on the like re reason. So now it's end of the time. Uh, feel free to go outside to grab some snack, coffee, or join Matthew at the main room for coffee session of the strategy. And thank you for the talk.